sculpture, decorating, arts and crafts, these are all the peaks of the culture of the Great Steppe. Textile and felt processing, hunting and carpentry, as well as jewelry, all of these things are the treasures of our national identity. You can watch this program about the precious heritage of our nation which has come down for many centuries in the program Kaz Art on Kazakh TV. If you go 30 kilometers to the southeast of Almaty along the road, you'll see a magnificent building. The sacred words, to a mother's honor, are written in the Snow White Palace on the mountainside, which brings warm feelings to your heart. This is a unique building that has no analogous, neither in Kazakhstan nor in Central Asia. To be more specific, the museum is devoted to the lovely mothers who rock the cradle with one hand and the world in the other. Неге біз осы мұражайда аштық? Өткені түбі ә, біздің сол өзіміздің отбасымызда ә, анамызды ә, Why have we established this museum? Well, we did it in fact because we grew up in a big family of nine children. During the wartime, it was very difficult for our mother. But after the war, she toiled a lot and even destroyed her health while giving birth to nine children and raising them. So our mother passed away when she was only 51. She had a lot of unfulfilled dreams. She did not see her children grow up and how they grew into manhood. She didn't see how they worked and how they would fulfill their dreams or wouldn't they. Therefore, we made a decision to open this museum in the memory of our mother. This museum is not only for our mother, but for all the mothers of our nation. This museum seems to paint a melancholy picture of mothers who have left their children or who are left with unfulfilled dreams. The two-story museum has got a total area of 750 square meters and currently exposes over 500 exhibits, which are various kinds and different content. Household objects, paintings, photos and documents related to the world of mothers. Also, there are corners devoted to the heroes of labor, mother heroes and daughter heroes, and they make it look very beautiful. Yeng aldimen arine uz tuustarimiz. First, we shared our idea about the museum with our family, our relatives and friends. We asked them to bring chests and sewing machines or old irons that the mothers used. They'd better be exposed in this museum rather than lying in dust. Then we recorded the register, who brought what and when. When they came here, they saw the things themselves. Bakut Apai, who initiated this great activity all over our country, presented these unique items full of national ornaments to our museum. The other regions of our country participated as well. People are willingly bringing valuable relics inherited from their grandmothers and mothers. This is how this unique museum with its special background in the neighborhood of Jetasu has developed. Bakut 
When we opened the museum, we thought of the different types of clothes that our mothers and daughters in history would wear, and what customs and traditions they had. There are a few paintings of that time in Kazakhstan. All of the paintings were sent earlier to the hermitage of the former Leningrad, and now we call it St. Petersburg. So our family friend, once he went to the hermitage, brought a lot of the paintings devoted to the Kazakh mothers and daughters and their traditions. Those paintings added color to the museum, and we and the youth are coming from other places, and we look at these paintings in wonder. We look at our mother's clothes, the jewelry, their hats, and their dresses in wonder and with great interest. In this painting, you can see a few models of the national clothes of our girls and women. These paintings were taken from the Hermitage of St. Petersburg, the former Leningrad. They were seen and painted by travelers and left there. In this painting, you can see a few models of the national clothes of our girls and women. These paintings were taken from the Hermitage of St. Peter, the former Leningrad. They were seen and painted by travelers and left there. These valuable paintings of the 18th to 19th century are the main heritage of the museum. In the ancient paintings, we can see that Kazakh women's clothes and jewelry were very beautiful, colorful, and full of genuine national ornaments. The national clothes of our mothers make our museum colorful. For instance, our little girls don't have their hair cut, but are plaited, and their hair is on two sides braided wearing a takia, or a skull cap, and a borik, which is a fur hat, when they grow older. It is surprising that when they reach the marriageable age, they wore a saukile, which is a bride's conical embroidered hat. And when they get married, they wear a headscarf. And finally, when they become grandmothers, they wear a kimishek, which is a covered hat for elderly women, which all were ornated and embroidered. All of these show our rich history, culture, and national traditions. In our museum, there's plenty of jewelry worn by elderly women, girls, and young women. Most of them are made of silver and pure metals. As I have mentioned before, the girls don't have their hair cut. So we'll look at the chasse which are ribbons with jewels. The girls weave the chasse onto their hair because it is good for their keeping and for the correct body posture. They wore rings on their fingers, for instance, a bird's beak ring and the ring of a mother or a daughter or a son-in-law, presented by the mothers-in-law to each other when the children were getting married. Once you enter the museum, it feels like you've entered a Kazakh yurt. It is decorated with yurt accessories and handicrafts of our lovely mothers. You can feel the mother's hand in the accessories of the yurt placed in the museum and other various household items. We can call this felt yurt the heart of the museum dedicated to our mothers. All of the yurt accessories like this thrum and the baskur, which are wood braid fixings on the yurt's wall, or the items of the interior decoration like this felt sirmak, which is an embroidered carpet, or this carpet have all mother's marks. For example, this kubi, which is a woven vessel for mixing kumus, or horses fermented milk, this stone hand mill and pestle for making talkan, which is ground wheat, as well as this chest and these blankets, patchwork quilts and pillows, were all made by the golden hands of mothers. On the first floor, this mini composition has got a deep meaning. It demonstrates a single day in the life of a family in the village. Uh, 
Our ancestors used to breed cattle, so here we show the women's labor in the museum, such as our mothers. They shear sheep and goats, they comb and color the wool, and they call the female neighbors to make various kinds of felt mats. Here on the right side, we can see the labor of those three people, the grandmother, her daughter-in-law, and her grandchild. The granddaughter is combing wool, and the daughter-in-law is spinning, coloring yarn, and at the same time making a meal. And the grandmother is making an alasha, which is a homespun coarse carpet. As we say, a mother rocks a cradle with one hand and the world in the other. The museum can help to raise up the young generation. Obviously, it would be useful for those who have strayed from the ancestors' path to find time to come to the museum. They can have warm feelings for the dearest people in their lives and understand their value. Осы жастар келген кезде осы мұражайға өзіміз қарап тұрамыз, содан кейін рахмет деп айтып кетіп отыр, айтады. Содан кейін өздерінің көздері өзгеше бір жарқырап. The young people who come here thank us. Having seen the museum, their eyes light up differently, and they see their mothers in a different light. They've got warm feelings and they leave us with kind thoughts and respect toward their mothers. Since last year, we've had a lot of students and pupils here. And they don't pay for entrance. So we've got a lot of tourists and foreigners also from France and Iran. They look at the museum in wonder, and they are surprised by the history, and they put it on their list to come back with more people. The second floor of the museum has got precious relics devoted to our mothers and daughters, and we are proud of them and admire them. Here is a special corner dedicated to the first president's family. Clearly his mother, Aljan, has got a lot to teach today's descendants about how to bring up such a son. Along with that, we've got more special and meaningful things. There is a sniper and a machine gunner, and pilot mothers who demonstrated heroism during World War II. We treat with respect the mothers like Manshuk Mametova, Alia Molagulova, and Hiwaz Dospanova, displayed in their pictures. This is the first generation of the history of Kazakhstan. This is Ait Bayeva Saulei Mohamedi Kizi. Currently, she is working as the prosecutor's department. Also, there is a rice-growing mother, the heroine named Salima Jumanbekova, a resident of Kizlordaz region. In the older times, she was elected as a deputy and went to Moscow together with Rosa Baglanova and Valentina Tereshkova. The hero mother was a hero of labor. Next to it, there is a monument, a bow to the mother, which complements the museum to a mother's honor as one ensemble. The mother who is cuddling her swaddling baby has got the sun's warmth in her eyes, and she seems to glow with decency. We are a nation who respect our mothers and serve our grandfathers, which is why the museum honor to a mother is a precious heritage for us. <laughs>